Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of the CESAR Digital Academy webinar series. Uh, um, I noticed that we have around 300 people uh, listening in at the moment, and I'm really happy to hear to have so many people here present on this interesting topic of cybersecurity. Um, just as a very little background, um, we've done quite a couple of webinars over the last year. Um, you can find all of those uh, recorded on our website. Uh, they are all published. Also, this one will be recorded and published afterwards. Um, this one is actually, although hosted by the CESAR uh, Joint Undertaking, it is actually organized by the, our scientific committee. This is our scientific committee, with Tanya Bollock present here as the vice chair, in collaboration with the PSOs, the professional staff associations, and the industry. Uh, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to the debate uh, between them. And I'll hand over from here directly to Tanya. Uh, hello, thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, as Ruben, I'm also very glad that we have, we can uh, be followed by this uh, many people. Uh, so let me introduce the today's uh, um, agenda. So today we have the ATM cybersecurity from the industry perspective. Um, as uh, Ruben said already, so it has been also organized between the PSOs and uh, the invited manufacturers to join us and uh, discuss um, cybersecurity. So as a scientific committee, uh, we were asked by the SJU to help uh, to help with the uh, better integration of uh, cybersecurity in the uh, in the research part of the ATM. Um, if you followed us in the past uh, past month, we organized uh, three workshops uh, to to talk uh, uh, to discuss with uh, the various stakeholders on um, on uh, on these issues and with uh, with the main goal to address uh, the guidance on how to organize the security activities in the future CESAR, possibly by suggesting uh, best practice of other international R&D programs, mm -hmm. and to focus on multi-member international collaborative development and program requirements on the quality and quantity of security, mm -hmm. uh, which is mainly on uh, how to deal with information sharing in the early R&D stages, because uh, sometimes that's not uh, possible for various um, legal and security issues. Um, uh, after these three workshops, we got this wonderful opportunity uh, that uh, PSOs uh, asked also uh, to, to address uh, from their perspective, the ATM cybersecurity. So with the previous three workshops and this workshop, uh, we, uh, we take this as an input, the, cyber, the scientific committee, and we, will, we are now working on drafting the recommendation paper for the next CESAR program, uh, and uh, which is due in June. And if that gets approved by the SJU, we will share also with, uh, with everybody. It's actually SJU will share that uh, on, the, on the website. Uh, as we said today, we will have the industry perspective. Oops. Um, Oh yeah. So uh, with this, uh, also what we found out that uh, well, well, we knew that, but we also found out that uh, many stakeholders have the same opinion that uh, it is something that there requires also long-term involvement. We might have a different another workshop later during the year, but we will uh, we will need to discuss that and organize it uh, better to um, to address uh, topics of interest. Uh, and as one of the things um, as a Cesar and um, to actually con start uh, building the, the continuous uh, security uh, involvement by everybody. Uh, if you can go on, uh, there is this uh, wiki, Engage Wiki. So Engage KTN is a, is a, uh, <clears throat> a CESAR's funded project that is uh, gathering all the projects and all the results in this Engage Wiki, as you can see here. And we also have, as you can see, underlined with the um, uh, with the render, there is a discussion fora. So, um, to be able to be in the discussion fora, you need to register, and uh, that's uh, relatively easy. It comes in two, three days, just because it's not automatic process, but uh, it's done uh, manually so far. 
And it would be good to uh, connect here as well, also on the cybersecurity issues, so that we can start discussing what is important for the next uh, for the next uh, research period. So that's one of the things that uh, can be done in the longer term involvement. Then we come to the today's agenda. So we had the introduction uh, by myself, and then after myself, I would like we will have Kostas Christoforou from IFACE that will present the PSOs. Um, the, the PSO view. Then we will have uh, the, from the industry, we will have Olivier Seguin uh, from Thales and uh, Sofia Helen Paris and Diego uh, Gracia Albandanea from uh, that are ATM and cybersecurity experts from Indra. And after that, we will uh, have the questions and answers. Um, just a little bit about the logistics of the, of the webinar. Uh, you can uh, uh, you can pose questions uh, during and after the presentations. Uh, please use the questions tab uh, to raise questions that you would like uh, our speakers uh, to answer or that we, you would like to be, be discussed by the panel. Uh, speakers can also start respond, uh, to respond uh, to you in, in writing in the questions tab, but we will, as moderators, we will read all those questions and we will pose them uh, to the speakers in the Q&A session. So also if you have a particular, if you would like uh, a particular speaker to, um, uh, to uh, answer your question, please uh, write it down in the, also within the question. And the chat, chat tab, uh, just use it uh, for uh, saying hi and uh, comments that you would not uh, like to have an answer to, or if you have any technical difficulties, because we also have uh, SJU support team in case you have any uh, problems. So with that, I would like to uh, to leave the floor to Costas, and he will then uh, is a director of uh, director manager of the FLC and he will uh, give us uh, his talk on the PSO view. Thank you very much, uh, Tanya. Uh, hi to all of you. Um, Kostas Christoforou, uh, IFACEA Director Europe and ANATSEP Engineer in Nicosia SEC. I'm here today on behalf of uh, the professional staff organization in Europe, ETF, ATCUC, ECA, IFATCA, and IFACEA, to share the, with you the perspective of the operational community uh, meaning the people that are face-to-face uh, -face with these security challenges each and every day, and also to present you some examples of the state-of-the-art tools by the industry. Uh, I would like to thank SJU and in particular Rupen Floor for accepting our proposal to organize this uh, webinar, uh, Robin Garrity for enabling this effort, and of course Tanya Bolic for helping us in this webinar. Following a series of webinars organized by SJU and the Scientific Committee, uh, we proposed this webinar dedicated to introducing the practical perspective of the industry along with the all frontline actors. More specifically, as nobody knows uh, all the truth, we will try in this short webinar to approach uh, the issue of cybersecurity from another angle the human side, but also its existing or missing technical enablers and staff concerns. Uh, we will try to give simple descriptions, avoiding complicated terms. Uh, as you know, the cybersecurity for ATM is a, is a complex, multi-level, multi-dimensional issue, as apart from the pure cybersecurity issue, it also includes the physical security at local and remote critical installations, the networking elements, space and ground, and the resulting ATM-specific attack vectors. These attack vectors can be combined to the signal space and ground infrastructure. It goes without saying that as in the modernized aviation environment, the number of digital applications and data interconnected network increases. The same goes for the risk of exposure to cyber threats and the difficulty in recovering after a cyber incident. This area in ATM contains a lot of uncharted territory ahead. In all new concepts of operation and in the foreseen service-oriented environment and architecture in the CNS ATM ecosystem, 
the accuracy, the integrity, and the availability of safety critical uh, information, as well as the continuity of service, are of vital importance. So, uh, what are the tools that exist uh, or must be researched in order to ensure quality and security of service in a geographically distributed system? And I how guess, will... Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are not seeing the slides if uh, you are... No, I, I, I'm going to... Ah, I'm uh, this so, is I'm just sorry. A, a short introduction. Okay. Uh, and how will the aircraft be a swim node will interact. So uh, we are looking for a solution towards cybersecurity protection question, aiming for robustness, resilience, and data sharing protection for the critical sector of ATM. Uh, now I will uh, share the presentation as I have a slide. Okay, I think now is working. So uh, currently, if we divide the cybersecurity for ATM notion in three main domains, uh, we can say that the, the first one is the learning process. This goes for all of us. It is a continuous process in which all involved entities should endeavor on a learning mode, embark upon an effort to gain as much as possible knowledge and expertise on this matter, fusing experience from past incidents and the scientific research on this domain while adhering to all regulatory framework requirements for cybersecurity in ATM. Here, operational requirements drive technical specification to result in system procurement. The second domain, uh, mainly this goes for the industry and uh, always with the human in the center. In this process, the industry must uh, materialize all acquired expertise, lesson learned, scientific research to respond to the expected specification, fulfilling any standard uh, requirement so as to manufacture new products for ATM uh, ANS. This uh, digitalized aviation era will contain all the goodies and the virtues consisting from one hand, a cyber secure environment at uh, design level, and from the other hand, to implement a cyber secure bulletproof practical solution for the foreseen system of systems, digitalized uh, ATM environment. Something that, as far as we know, industry is already working upon, but much more is being uh, researched in the SJU project. The third domain uh, addresses the human element and much more. Inevitably, in all these new concepts, uh, brings a lot of challenges for all the aviation human actors, mainly ATSEP, ATCOS, and pilots. Uh, and the fundam fundamental principle uh, here is that cyber attacks must never reach at cost or pilot's position. So uh, starting from the very basic, uh, we should educate people on all the, these challenges and uh, bring in awareness uh, and also to accomplish uh, a holistic system wide awareness. And uh, moreover, uh, frontline users must trust the system and the data that is presented to them. The essence of human-centric design is to allow and enable humans to recover the system from disruption, even from rare high-risk scenarios. Keep in mind that the approach in cybersecurity defense built in is to think out of the box attack scenarios. We should all have in mind that it is the most advanced foolproof, high automated system that rarely need manual intervention, which may need the greatest investment in human uh, resources. And of course, cyber security, security training. Then 
we must uh, combine the information and tasks in the areas of SRIA, airspace architecture study, and ATM master plan to build the net to achieve this catering for a distributed system. As, uh, the ultimate task uh, is to have security and integrity wise bulletproof and resilient system together with trained and competent professionals in order to avoid situation that will impact safety but also performance. So effectively, to speak in COVID terms, we are asking by the industry to manufacture the vaccine and the cure for this crucial issue of cybersecurity by implementing the SJU research and development solution as well as their state-of-the-art solution which they have developed or they are developing. Uh, I'm going now to the presentation by the PSOs. Uh, I will start with the presentation of my federation, the International Federation of Air Traffic Safety Electronics Association. Uh, in, in all uh, presentations uh, about cybersecurity, the usual discussion is mainly high level about the systems, the, the regulations, the audits, but rarely about the actual technical architecture, about the tools that will actually be used in the forthcoming beyond the state of the art uh, that the industry representatives will present later on for Cesar solution, enabled a distributed uh, system. I will explain through two scenarios. Uh, the first one is relatively simple. Uh, think about the tower, conventional or remote, and an approach room on a large or even medium-sized airport where there is a combined attack through spoofing of the space navigation system, maybe also jamming uh, ground na navigates and an uh, attack, an IT network cyber attack. Uh, this is a combined scenario like the one presented by the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity, ENISA, a couple of years ago. Uh, the issue we want to raise here is a combined attack through the spoofing of the signal space and the classic, if you like, IT cyber attack, for example, denial of service. Uh, the simple question in this uh, attack, do we have the tools to address this attack or they are included in the research and development scope? The second scenario is a more uh, futuristic one involving virtual centers, ATSPs, uh, according to the airspace architecture study scenario, uh, for example, the special scenario where one ADSP fits uh, three different uh, virtual centers uh, located in different geographical uh, position. Please note that in the scenario, in this scenario, the CNS uh, provision uh, is does not experience any any problem. Uh, you may even consider the ATSP service to be running in the cloud. Thus, all entities are geographically apart, but uh, this is not so important in the, in the point we want to make in this scenario, as it will involve uh, coordination with the cloud provider, security systems, uh, overcomplicated the issue. Consider that uh, while uh, Virtual uh, Center 3 is operating normally, uh, virtual Center 1 and Virtual Center 2 experience some malfunction. For example, unreliable or slow refresh data on screen. And after a few minutes, the ATSP also identifies some issue as well. How uh, will these entities operate in collaborative decision making? And how are they going to coordinate and share the information? How will the related security and health status uh, information be presented at the ATSEP and the ATCOS uh, working uh, position? Uh, is there a security information and event management available to fit the ATSEP working position with the events? Most possibly something supported by artificial intelligence uh, based solution. 
Uh, is there any existing or in the pipeline tool or concept through which the entities involved share the same standardized technical situation awareness picture? And then, is there any tool available that will be able to monitor and control the related uh, ADMA process so as to ensure data integrity and quality of services delivered locally and remotely? remotely? Uh, SJU SRIA text address the need to create and share this system wide technical situation awareness picture. Shouldn't this be elaborated further? If ATSEA believes that the following tools must be included in the research and development activities of SRIA and further develop a significant crucial enablers for addressing the cybersecurity issue throughout the ATM ecosystem. We must develop further the ATSEP working position from uh, CESAR-1 by in the EGHT work on ATCO and ATSEP working position and several SJU project, develop the processing and uh, presentation layers to present the related security formation at the ATSEP and ATCO working position and share, share it accordingly. Uh, recently developed for tools and concepts through which the entities involved share the same standardized technical and operational situation awareness picture. And uh, this is something that can be built with the use of artificial intelligence-based solutions. Also, quality safety management process for all critical ATM data. By developing and standardizing and deploying the above tools, we will make the new system directly interoperable, more functional and resilient. Otherwise, there will be no organized way of addressing the cyber issue on the distributed ATM functional system under a total system approach. Can this be the elephant in the room? Now uh, I have uh, the uh, slides from uh, the European Transport Federation ETF, uh, where the uh, ETF uh, stresses the importance of adequate training for law ATM personnel in order to deal with any cybersecurity events. It is essential for the staff to be increasing, increasingly trained, considering what may be current and future needs in terms of cybersecurity. And they raise the example that in the current uh, unit training programs around Europe, uh, th there is not so much emphasis and uh, training on the hypothesis of cyber attacks, uh, something that uh, which is definitely uh, useful. And uh, as of obsolete uh, topicality, uh, ETF believes that it should be in-depth analysis, analysis of the relationship between the worker and artificial intelligence that uh, will have more and more importance in our work in the near future. Uh, also, ETF points out the need for a general analysis of the regulatory framework Start, starting from ICAO and coming to the European matters with the pilot common project and CES2++. Uh, there should be a continuous process of educating and informing the frontline actors about cybersecurity issues, especially considering the growing, growing inter interest uh, shown in the creation of ADSPs, the, uh, the introduction of drones in the control airspace, and the future challenges of satellite uh, navigation. Uh, now I have the air traffic controllers European Union's uh, coordination. Uh, ATCUC believes that cybersecurity will be a crucial topic for the coming years, where all ATM data will be on the cloud, and, and this, of course, creates major concern. Uh, so ATCUC raised some logical question, where will that uh, server be located, uh, 
how is taking who is taking care of it uh, if it's in china or india what if an ansp chooses a service provided over another will the system and the formation be interconnected what is the recovery time in case of any kind of problem for example cyber attack will front end actors at cost at the pilots be able to acknowledge if the data is corrupted and also to intervene and recover the operations so very crucial question uh, also uh, availability and integrity of data uh, is a major issue we need uh, assurance about the formation on the screen in front of us this is not a domain to obtain savings so the proper investment should be placed without jeopardized safety and yet the peak and solve issue of uh, reliability versus liability the reliability of these services relies on the availability of the various tools indeed a partial failure of a tool in use can have tragic consequences so we hope that industry perspective we still put safety first uh, now the international federation of air traffic controllers association ifatka uh, points uh, out the peculiarity in the current atc systems that makes them very different from many other it systems they are close and inflexible unlike a typical uh, administrative tool which comes in the form of a desktop computer atc system only allow few operation directly related to the job uh, they are built to be operated in place unlike users of most it system at cost cannot be considered a weakness or a risk being uh, the reason that they cannot click on a malicious link or open an email attachment including uh, a trojan they cannot switch um, they, they cannot switch a usb stick uh, of unknown origin to their system this is simply out of the question due to the design uh, the usual approach to cyber security starts with the need to educate and train the user but this is not maybe for the moment real necessity in the atc due to these peculiarities of the system. Lately, we hear about all kinds of new technologies, swim, cloud computing. Will this bring more open and flexible, hence more vulnerable systems? And uh, in that case, we will need to train the users, which brings a problem of trust. A typical approach of security is through mistrust, but data shown in the controller working position uh, have to be trusted. This will bring a delicate compromise if training in cybersecurity is requested. But no matter what, cyber incidents can bring, it is for sure a contingency. Uh, it can provide a, a minor corruption of secondary data, for example, a change in the speed uh, field in the flight plan or a complete system failure. Uh, for example, a loss of communication and all surveillance track. But uh, from user point of view, the origin of the disruption doesn't matter. A technical failure or an intentional cyber attack have the same consequences for, for the user, and therefore, cyber incident must be addressed in the contingency plan. Uh, also, if ATCA states that the inclusion of cyber attack uh, consequences in contingency plans help to deal with the situation but the intentionality of the disruption created peculiarity recognized by fatca in 2018 when a policy to consider cyber attacks as a form of unlawful interference was approved therefore all uh, provision aimed to deal with uh, unlawful interference applied to cybersecurity incidents. For example, the need to design contingency procedure that assure minimal disruption of service, if possible, because the possibility of complete withdrawal of service cannot be disregarded. In such a case, a minimal disruption translates as resuming the service as soon as practical. 
A second consideration included, included in this policy is that ATCO must follow the accepted rules and procedure and must not held legally responsible in case the authorities under a complete abnormal situation request a deviation of such rules and procedures. For the European Corporate uh, Association, uh, ECA raised the conflicting requirements between the risk assessment in aviation safety and in cyber security. A aviation safety requires extensive certification testing before the changing uh, of systems, including software, where cyber security is significantly harmed when the updating of the system patching, for example, for vulnerabilities is not done quickly. As authorities may require the approval to system and software changes, some ATM providers are only able to update their system once every six months or once a year. The suggestion here is to work on a risk management system that will be able to compare the risk on both worlds and select the, the option uh, with the lower uh, risk. Uh, ECA uh, raised uh, the uh, question if sufficient protections are in place to combat attackers spoofing communication and navigation facilities. Furthermore, uh, ECA is concerned with the use of off-the-shelf products able to interfere with aviation, communication and navigation. These products are available in the market at affordable prices, something that constitutes a potential hazard. So, uh, summing up all the concerns and the recommendation by the PSOs, the pilots uh, raise the concern of uh, the existing risk assessment for cybersecurity, both in the airport and ground environments, and they recommend to build the necessary improvements in this risk management system. Also, uh, another challenge is to implement adequate protection to the operation in order to achieve trust. And the recommendation here is to provide real and visible protection for the operators. For the ATCOs, uh, one of the main concerns is the legal framework and the lack of training for the professional that will raise their awareness. And they recommend to build an efficient and practical legal framework uh, to this demanding issue and, and uh, a continuous process of educating and informing the frontline actors about cybersecurity. Uh, another concern is the risk of relocation of infrastructure and the response time after an, after an attack. Uh, the, uh, rec they suggest industry to put safety first and invest on cyber security in ATM and also design the proper contingency plan for cyber related uh, situation. For the ATSEP, today's challenges are beyond imagination in relation to the foreseen distributed architecture and virtualization in aviation. According to IASA, ATSEP are responsible to address cybersecurity issues as they are the only ones who can stop and start critical process in the ATM functional system. Moreover, ATSEP will require to run legacy CNS ATM system until 2030 and maybe more, while working towards the implementation and integration of all new system as uh, of uh, ATM master plan and airspace architecture study. Uh, there is a lack of concepts and tools for ATSEP working position capable to safeguard the new distributed functional ATM ANS system. There is a need to develop the processing and presentation layers to present the related security information at ATSEP and ATCO working position and share it accordingly. And also, we must develop and standardize technical and operational, operational situation awareness methods and tools for, for ATSEP working position. So the recommendation we would like to make is that 
we should be able to act as safeguards for the cybersecurity in ATM with ultimate goal to defend the functional system from many cyber attacks, ideally stopping it, stopping it from reaching the frontline users, the ATCOS and the pilots. In closing, we believe that all the above listed concerns, which more or less specify tools, must be included in the research and development activities of SJU SRIA and develop in the next phase, aiming at establishing a quality and safety management process for all critical ATM data, processes and systems, so as to enable the shared system-wide technical status awareness. Thank you very much. Uh, now uh, we proceed with the presentations uh, from uh, the industry. Uh, we have uh, today with us uh, from Thales, uh, Olivier Seguin. Uh, Olivier has uh, 30 years of experience working mainly uh, within Thales in the CNS ATM domain. Uh, where he become expert in Thales Top Sky solutions. Uh, since uh, 2016, Olivier uh, has been in charge of CNS ATM business development for Europe area and uh, cyber security solution. Olivier, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Costas. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to have been invited to introduce you the Thales perspective on the ATM uh, cybersecurity. Um, Costas, your presentation was very good with many interesting uh, and tricky questions, I must admit. Uh, we will try as an industry to, to answer to some of them, I, I hope, uh, and I'm sure that uh, we will have uh, the opportunity uh, to have many questions to, to answer as well from the, the community. What I propose you today, uh, it's a quick look on what we are fighting, uh, what Thales is uh, offering in cybersecurity on its contribution uh, to the aviation domain, how and where we can uh, help you, the PESO, and uh, a quick look on the tool we are developing currently to monitor CNS uh, ATM uh, cyber events. So let's start. Uh, as we are an industry, uh, you can imagine that we like to make a little uh, pub uh, with a little publicity. Uh, just one slide. Uh, I won't explain uh, the whole figures, of course. It's not interesting uh, for most of you. But uh, it's to show how cybersecurity is important for Thales. We invested a lot since several years and we continue to invest, especially to be ready for the coming uh, ATM digital transformation, as uh, Costas uh, mentioned, ADSP, uh, virtual centers, uh, digital remote towers, uh, drone, uh, swim, uh, etc. So I just highlight on this slide uh, that we are uh, operating five CSOC in the world, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, uh, something uh, we, we, we think. But, um, we uh, don't do the cyber security alone. We contribute uh, to organization as uh, ICAO. So we contribute to uh, ICAO uh, warm up and uh, framework definition. Uh, we contribute to uh, EASA uh, for the storm uh, work stream, uh, to EUROCAE as well, and to the French Civil Aviation uh, Council. Now, uh, just to, 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 to remind uh, or make, uh, let's say, uh, the, the scene, um, for, for, for us, here is the playground for the, for the hackers. And this is the reason why uh, we think that we shall take into account uh, the full CNS ATM ecosystem. Uh, the threats uh, can come from many interfaces. Uh, as uh, radars, uh, ADSB, 
satellite communication, de CDM capability, uh, I said swim technology, data link uh, as well, and uh, for instance, to uh, our uh, entity, uh, Thales uh, Avionics, uh, we did threat analysis dealing with the CPDLC uh, communication and the CPDLC data link, uh, and the result uh, was pretty uh, interesting in a such, uh, such a topic. We did also tests with uh, ADSB, uh, simulating uh, signal uh, jamming or spoofing, and assessing how uh, the surveillance tracker uh, is uh, reacting in front of uh, this kind of uh, attack. Uh, but the attack can come also from inside, uh, from the supply chain, uh, delivering uh, software, for example, on embedding so malware in, uh, in, in the software. And uh, it can come also from uh, remote services. Uh, for example, we have some uh, example of uh, some uh, uh, civil aviation in the world uh, where uh, attacked uh, last year uh, through the VPN uh, connection. Uh, the VPN connection usually uh, uh, used for maintenance, uh, support and maintenance. And, uh, and those other attacks can come also from uh, human errors. Uh, even in most of uh, the systems, uh, USB uh, drivers are deactivated. Uh, we have uh, one example where the, so someone uh, go to a super, a supervision and uh, change the right, uh, the supervisor right, and insert a new USB key not for malicious act, but only to have access to some log and transfer the log to the, the supplier. And uh, that was it, uh, malware was uh, inserted in the system. So here is a large playground and uh, the threats can come uh, from anywhere. We answer to those threats by combining uh, information technology and what we call operational technology. On the information technology side, uh, we can provide uh, probes, gateways, uh, data diodes. Uh, we can provide also uh, cyber secure architecture. Uh, this takes into account the operational system hardening, for instance, the software itself secured by design, up to the network topology uh, secure topology as well, uh, for example, with uh, gateways and, uh, and data diodes. Um, we uh, propose as well, we can propose as well analytic platforms, which uh, are based on monitoring tools, which can be interfaced to a CM or some probes, and uh, it embeds artificial intelligence and machine learning to manage CNS, sorry, ATM operational events. For, its, for instance, um, it can help uh, to differentiate uh, abnormal pattern or situation uh, that, we can, uh, that we can face, and all the results are presented uh, within the dashboard. And we also uh, provide uh, digital identity management, for example, uh, multi-factor authentication. On the operational uh, technology side, Uh, we are providing uh, training adapted to uh, CNS at the uh, context. We are providing services like uh, on-site assessment with different possible scope and activities from global exposure uh, weaknesses up to on-site pen test, for instance. And we uh, also provide uh, CERT and CSOC services. Uh, I said that. Uh, We have uh, several CSOC in the, in the world. Regarding the monitoring possibility, I will do a specific uh, focus on what we are working on at the end of uh, the presentation. So let's continue our safe uh, journey. Uh, Thales uh, ATM Cyber Services and the solution follow the NIST uh, framework. Uh, build on those uh, five uh, pillars, 
uh, identify, protect, detect, respond and uh, recover. So I'm going to detail, uh, to detail uh, uh, what uh, solutions, what services uh, we propose in front of each pillars. So let's start by identify. Uh, so based on the, your specific uh, assets or uh, scope, uh, we can propose a risk analysis, uh, on-site uh, assessments with a checkup, uh, test your uh, public uh, exposure, and uh, the outcome is a report with the recommended uh, measure. Um, from this year, uh, taking into account the, of the difficulty uh, to travel abroad, uh, we are able to manage remotely uh, those services. Uh, if we cannot uh, uh, do the, the pen test uh, on-site, uh, we have uh, developed uh, several means uh, to manage it uh, remotely uh, as well. The protect uh, pillars. Uh, so today we can propose upgrades uh, for legacy and operational system. Uh, I saw uh, some question uh, regarding what uh, is available today and uh, what is planned uh, for uh, the mid-term or the long term. Um, here, uh, we think uh, as well uh, to our, uh, let's say, uh, uh, current customer, for instance, and current Stalas user, and uh, it's not for tomorrow. As they need, we need to make plans, we need to make research and development, of course, but some of them uh, for, for example, the geographic or politic, uh, geographic political reasons, need to have some solution uh, right now today so for uh, for them uh, we can propose uh, today cyber upgrades and uh, uh, things means uh, for system into uh, which run into operation um, tomorrow uh, we will propose our space mobility solution secured by design including uh, atm systems the drone uh, surveillance uh, uh, solution, uh, etc. We do uh, as well vulnerability management with our uh, CERT. Then we can inform our customer when a critical vulnerability uh, is detected. Uh, of course, it covers the Thales product, the vulnerabilities, but any other products that a customer would ask uh, Thales to, to follow. Uh, that's possible as well. As soon we have the, 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 the configuration, uh, we can commit to follow uh, any vulnerabilities on the, those uh, codes, for instance. Uh, we plan also to provide uh, relevant vulnerabilities to uh, the Eurocontrol IATM CERT. Uh, I guess that some of you uh, knows very well uh, the IATM CERT managed by uh, our uh, colleague, uh, colleague Patrick Mana uh, in Eurocontrol, and uh, providing relevant vulnerability to, to them, uh, which will benefit uh, to the aviation community. Detect. So, uh, as I said, we develop probes. So, uh, we, 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 develop, we are developing uh, currently uh, operational probes. Uh, for instance, for radar interfaces at the SB station or uh, within the top sky, our ITM surface system, uh, within the top sky ITC uh, uh, middleware. So those, those probes uh, are uh, customized probes uh, uh, detecting uh, events, cyber events, uh, cyber attacks, abnormal situation uh, within uh, the uh, the ATM interfaces, uh, ATM behavior, so it's a really operational problem. Uh, of course, we are proposing we are proposing architecture means, uh, uh, let's say uh, antivirus, of course, data diode, I said, uh, gateways as well, uh, encryption, application control, intrusion prevention system, network access control, uh, etc. I said uh, that uh, human could be as well uh, a threat himself. Uh, then we propose several services uh, to educate uh, by training with uh, e-learning, as many uh, of uh, cyber suppliers, 
but uh, also by using uh, what we call a, a twin or a virtual ATC system where we can play with uh, realistic attack uh, scenarios. And I will uh, finish uh, this framework uh, turn uh, with respond and, reco and recover. Uh, so this can be with uh, CSOC. Uh, I say that uh, Thales is running uh, CSOC. Uh, and we are currently building the uh, Eurocontrol CSOC uh, as well. So it will be, uh, we will have, uh, let's say, uh, six uh, CSOC in our portfolio. But I shall mention uh, that uh, as we run uh, operationally the, the, the five pre previous ones, uh, Eurocontrol will run uh, his own SOC. And we are only delivering the means to, uh, to run. Um, and uh, to finish the, the tour, uh, we, we have also a cyber monitoring tool, specially developed and adapted for CNS ATM. Uh, the goal is to help for resilience and recovery process. And as promised, I'm going to detail more this capability now. So here is the rationale. You are not cyber experts, but ATM user. IT, ATM cyber monitoring transforms uh, or translates, let's say, a cyber event into an ATM technical event. It is a bit like uh, your uh, control and monitoring system, but without cyber events. It will tell you uh, which operational services could be impacted, uh, for instance, uh, flight plans, safety nets, uh, or surveillance. Uh, and the recovery procedures can be attached with the cyber events. Then, uh, cyber syslog uh, can be automat automatically sent sorry, to uh, a CISOC uh, or to an analytic platform uh, or any cyber team actually to confirm or to invalidate the cyber events and to propose a reaction plan. So here, an here is an example of what uh, is displayed. So don't focus too much on the HMI uh, layout. And this one is a snapshot of, a, let's say, a previous version. Uh, we are currently uh, continu continuing to, to develop uh, the, 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 the next version. So the next one will be slightly different. Uh, but the objective on the functionality remain the same. Uh, here uh, you have uh, the uh, ATM and the CNS, let's say, architecture. Um, what you are uh, seeing uh, here, the, the, the small boxes, uh, we have small boxes everywhere, uh, are um, where the probes, uh, the operational probes, are monitoring the data flow. When a cyber security uh, event is detected, uh, detected sorry, uh, the boxes are changing colors. For example, uh, this uh, orange uh, orange box means uh, sorry, this orange box here uh, in orange uh, means that the radar routers is uh, is attacked and uh, there is a degradation on, the, on this flow. The colors are typical hein, as a CMS system. Um, blue is unknown, uh, orange or yellow is degraded, red is critical, and green, everything is, uh, is OK. Or here, uh, for instance, is only orange that we presume that uh, we have redundancy uh, of routers. Uh, then only one is attacked, and then uh, you can continue to, to get the surveillance flow through uh, the slave one, the backup one. Um, when uh, an alert is, uh, is read, uh, you have a pop-up window, then an alert window with uh, the, the very detailed cyber event uh, recorded, and the procedure attached uh, to help uh, 
de technician or the engineer or the, superv the tech supervisor, the ops supervisor uh, to uh, take the good decision uh, to switch off, uh, to switch over a router, to switch over uh, anything in the system as he will do uh, with a standard uh, control and monitoring system. On the top left, uh, we represent uh, uh, the, 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 the services, uh, the, the services, uh, status of operational services, for example, what uh, we are losing, uh, surveillance, surveillance chain or safety net chain, um, etc., fly plan. Uh, here we have the full topology of the total components uh, embedded in the system and their uh, relationships. Uh, on the, the top bar is the aggregation of uh, cyber events, uh, not only with numbers, uh, but also with the, the criticality. Uh, so difficult for you, I guess, to, to, to see the colors, but here we, we can see that uh, we, we have uh, the first day a uh, different uh, critical attack uh, in yellow, in, in a range of, there is many means to aggregate uh, the number of attack. Everything is displayed at the, the dashboard, the dashboard can be configurable, etc. On the, on the menu side, uh, you have other means, uh, of course, uh, incident, uh, an alarm summary details, uh, tickets, because the, the tools can communicate directly with the CSOC. Uh, and other, uh, other means. So that's it for my presentation. So we should uh, uh, go future discussion with our expert. Uh, feel free to contact us uh, at the marketing uh, ATM uh, at talesgroup.com. And I will be at the end of uh, the whole presentation uh, to answer to uh, your, your question. So thank you very much for your attention. and. Uh, uh, see you soon. Olivier, thank you very much for this informative and interesting presentation. Uh, just a kind message to all our viewers, please uh, place your question in in the correct uh, section, not at the chat, but at the que questions uh, part. Uh, now uh, we have the intra uh, presentation and we have uh, with us uh, Sofia Eran Baris and uh, Diago Gracia Alpandea. Uh, Sofia is a telecommunication system engineer uh, with a master's degree in aviation management. She has been managing and monitoring projects uh, since the, she started uh, uh, her career in aviation industry some years ago. Uh, in Indra, uh, she managed uh, several ATM and cybersecurity projects. Um, Tiago is a cybersecurity consultant with 10 years of experience in systems architecture, classified environment, and cyber defense project management. He's a coordinator of national and international project, projects uh, with experience in public and private sector in defense, space, and transport. Uh, Sofia, Tiago, you have the floor. Thank you, Gustav. Can you hear me properly? Are they having mic issues? Yeah? Yes, yes. I think it's okay. Yes, yes to check. Thank you. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my colleague Diego and myself, Sofia, are pleased to present a bit of the Indra industry perspective regarding the cybersecurity and the ATM today in this webinar. First of all, we would like to introduce our company, Indra, followed by an ATM perspective performed by Diego. Uh, we will also highlight uh, some of the Indra cybersecurity approach in ATM. We will finish the presentation with some um, identified goals for the industry to open the discussion with all of you. Uh, can you move the slide, Danny, please? Thank you. Uh, let me then introduce Indra, which is one of the main global consulting and technological companies and it's also a technological partner for core businesses operations which offer ad hoc services with a high added value in technology. Indra is also a world leader in the development of technological solutions 
in fields such as defense and security, transport and traffic, energy, telecommunications, uh, financial services, public administration, and healthcare, with a local presence in 46 countries and sales operations in more than 141. Now um, it's time for Diego, one of our cybersecurity experts, to present you about the ATM perspective. So please, Diego, the floor is yours. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction, Sofia. Thank you very much, Costas and all the team. It's a big pleasure for us to be here. So thank you again. So um, we can start with our first slide. Can you go ahead, Daniel, please? Uh, Okay, this is the ATM perspective, and uh, we would like to do um, a quick overview of some very interesting concepts for us uh, in the ATM perspective. <clears throat> so, for example, um, in this slide, we can observe a high level of advanced architecture uh, for ATM systems, uh, because in accordance with the conclusions and the recommendations for the aerospace, uh, aerospace architecture study, uh, the use of the latest technologies and architecture will be relied upon to provide the resilience and scalability required uh, to the ATM network, allowing greater flexibility in the provision of ATM and uh, its services. So, well, uh, with this data, uh, we can archive uh, two major milestones. The first one is um, overcome uh, the capacity limitations for the existing network. And the second one is uh, get a more um, efficient adaptability to the real changing needs will be provided, making the level of service required and admin time uh, more flexible and allowing a greater provision of services inside. So, um, of course, this will mean that uh, ATM architectures must provide the ability to vary infrastructure needs following changing uh, demand for availability. So, in this way, the new technologies can help archive this goal in order to facilitate this transition. If we take uh, two points in an horizontal line, we can find uh, virtualization and the clue ready environments at the state. So first, with the virtualization and the finally cloud-ready technology, we will ensure uh, that ATM services will be platform independent and which will provide flexibility to be implemented in cloud infrastructure, such private uh, or hybrid, in order to obtain um, the main uh, benefits as possible. Uh, but of course, uh, we need to build um, architecture to ensure that uh, the domain and requirements of ATM system are met in cloud environments. So, we can say also a concept like as a service business model will uh, facilitate uh, interoperability and implementation of the virtual center concept. And the service orientation and open, uh, open architecture will foster agility to offer a new open ecosystems and systems too. And also for the last one, uh, we need to refer the cyber resilience concept. Uh, that, of, that, of course, the business continuity must adapt to the new context where redundancy is not enough for this world. So ATM architectures must ensure a geo-decoupling service and provide a comprehensive response uh, to cybersecurity threats. So you can go ahead, Daniel, with the next uh, screen, please. <clears throat> so, okay. This is uh, something that our colleague uh, from Tail Thales uh, said as before, but uh, of course, everything so uh, in my previous slide is based on NIST user uh, cybersecurity framework and standards. And all these functions are the highest level of abstractions included in the framework. The act as the backbone of the framework core that all other elements are organized around. So these five functions were selected because they represent the five primary pillars for a successful and holistic cybersecurity program. So then we can find identify, like we can uh, share the vulnerabilities and cybersecurity risk within the organizations. Then we have on the next step, like a protect uh, with the critical elements detected in a preemptive stage. Then also we have the most important thing that is detect the anomalous activities, analyzing the impact uh, with detention and uh, ad hoc procedures in this way. Respond is the next way that we need a plan to respond and mitigate 
all the detection cybersecurity events that we have in our environment. And then the last one, uh, we have the recover uh, to get the success in our cycle that it's uh, building a solid recovery solution which covered uh, all types of uh, cybersecurity events. Okay, so now um, we can say that these activities can be carried out by the organizations and also this roadmap ensures perfect compliance with the uh, solid uh, cybersecurity standards and the ecosystem. Sophia? Yeah, uh, thank you, Yil. Um can you change the light, please, Dan? Thank you. Um, next one. Okay. Uh, so once we have been seeing the ADM perspective uh, by Diego, it's time to introduce you the cybersecurity approach in a hybrid cloud environment, which is tackled in three main identities. The first one belongs to the architecture and infrastructure, which aims to ensure protection among multiple providers within the industry. Um, also, thanks to the communications and the identity management, uh, the new internal and external communication features can be introduced, always guaranteeing that the data and the communications are secure with uh, some mechanisms like encryption and anonymization, creating this way the aim data centric approach. Uh, next slide, please. Annie. So, here we have a um, the cyber awareness security. Um, once this solid and resi resilient cybersecurity approach is in place, the cyber analysis can be translated into an actionable ATM business management. We will start at the perception layer, uh, where the cyber-related information from different ATM systems applications and sensors is collected. Then, uh, in the next layer, in the cyber risk awareness, uh, the tactical understanding of cyber events with my impact on the operational level takes place. Uh, once uh, the cyber risk is analyzed, it's time to identify uh, the risk on an operational level, which takes place in the operational risk awareness. Um, then we will have to move to the reasoning, reasoning stage, which is the engine of this cyber awareness um, approach, where the real-time cyber intelligence is provided. Uh, then on the decision making stage, uh, uh, the prediction and the simulation collected on the reasoning, but are the rules for the actuation first, where nowadays uh, it is distributed among manual and semi automatic processes. But the aim is to move uh, towards semi optimization, but always taking into account that the level of criticality of the operations. Then we move to some of the key phases which is the human computer interface and the ATI and the visualization. Uh, in this interface, uh, represents a challenge as part of this cyber awareness in terms of visualization for the end user, which is uh, pilots, uh, air traffic controllers, or system engineers. It can also be called um, an operational picture. Uh, this ATI, this interface, um, should only notify about a specific cyber event uh, depending on this criticality, uh, depending about the end user, uh, for instance, a pilot can receive in the cockpit all the events. Like they cannot receive all the threats, they cannot receive all the cyber attacks, they cannot receive all the events. So we have to be very specific in, in this in this stage. This is why the implementation of the interface interface uh, should be segregated uh, depending on the on the end user. Uh, finally. Uh, the information and the communication collected during the process should be shared with third-party ATM systems uh, to expand and to enhance the cyber awareness culture. Um, to summarize, uh, can you change the slide, please, Dan? Thank you. Uh, so the other went to the ATM uh, perspective um, regarding cybersecurity, followed by the cybersecurity approach and the cyber awareness culture. So now it's time for Diego to introduce the future needs, uh, let's say the goals that Indra visualized for the industry and the challenge of the implementation of the cybersecurity in the ATM environment. So please, Diego. Okay, thanks again, Sofia. So this is a one small slide that uh, we would like to, to say how Indra sees uh, the needs and goals for the industry in the 
future, we said, let me say, um, because currently uh, the aviation ecosystem, like uh, many other, other sectors, uh, is in a full phase of digitalization and connectivity. So physical elements and cybernetic systems are increasingly connected from goods to people and data, taking advantage of technologies such as biometrics, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, IoT, blockchain, etc. etc. So as I said, for Indra, um, future needs and goals for the industry could be resumed in this kind, uh, in this blue point, uh, let me say. Um, like the, for example, uh, build a collective approach that also identifies and addresses industry challenges and gaps. Um, we have also a system of cyber uh, risk management methods uh, throughout the industry. So in this way, stakeholders can make informed decisions and be aligned in solving strategies with us. Um, with all, uh, we have also the defense in deep in a hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, sorry, cloud environment. So, as we said at the beginning of our presentations, we must find the balance point between the decentralization services and the current situations uh, in our ecosystem. Um, we can check also the cyber awareness of the world ITM ecosystem. So that means that the challenge uh, is to be aware of the challenge posted in the cyber security and now how it's spread in your IATM security ecosystem as uh, in your enterprise. Um, we can say something about uh, managed emerging technology risk. That is, uh, of course, a risk that we have in our current world. So to increase the success of emergency technology adoptions in the aviation industry anticipation uh, should be be uh, sure in the inclusion of new technology in the system. So we need to do it uh, between all the stakeholders in the in the market. And we can also build a stronger culture of zero resilience across the industry. That is really, really important because that including greater integration of cyber security and operational skills uh, within the industry and must be defined in conjunction with our navigation service providers. This is a uh, real, real important about us. And uh, last but not least, we have the security by design. So which it involves address security requirements for the beginning um, and use methodologies in the continuous software cycle with a good practices for, for all those ones. So in summary, uh, this is a high level approach uh, to the safety concepts uh, to which the ADC environments will be directed. And they are very, very interesting concepts uh, to concentrate in the webinar that it's uh, only, we have only one hour and a half uh, about uh, the durations about it, but we want it, uh, it to serve as an introduction for you. So we hope it has been useful and you have enjoyed this presentation from my colleague Sophia and from me. Thank you a lot for your attention. And uh, it was uh, a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Diago and Sofia. Uh, I will ask uh, Tania now to step in and uh, continue with the Q&A session. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you all uh, very much. Um, we have uh, we received quite a number of interesting questions. So uh, we can start with one of the first one. I'm going to start with those that received most um, most upvotes uh, for the industry. So I have uh, one from uh, Yanni Strakas, which is asking, uh, which is the industry's approach on developing cybersecurity solutions regarding that the ATM is not just an IT system, but a complex socio-technical cyber-physical system that includes legacy systems and equipment. Uh, maybe Olivier, you can start. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Tania, for this question. And uh, thank you for all of the uh, uh, who are uh, uh, asking this question. It's a very tricky question. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, uh, obviously, um, we we have not, let's say, uh, uh, an answer right now, but we we have some uh, uh, some building block uh, in, in, in progress. Um, first, uh, regarding the operational uh, let's say behavior, a specific uh, behavior uh, of an ATM system. It's exactly uh, the reason why we are developing uh, at Thales uh, operational probe. 
for instance, uh, if uh, we detect something on the network and uh, uh, can be from the, 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 the radar surveillance or for fly plan, uh, the probe uh, that we are developing uh, will be able uh, to assess if it's a, a real uh, a cyber attack, meaning that um, the, the probe will be able to assess uh, the behavior of the system. Not only uh, I receive something, uh, there is a wrong data or uh, uh, anything in the flow, uh, so I, I stop the communication. No, it, it will go further uh, to assess what is really the behavior. Is it, uh, let's say, uh, a specific uh, a behavior for, uh, for example, the clearance? Uh, is uh, the, the CFL is completely uh, abnormal or this kind of uh, this kind of way uh, to work and it will help uh, that it's not only an IT system uh, it's not only a malware or anything else because um, what we analyze and I will uh, I will leave the, the, the floor to, uh, to, to my uh, Spanish colleague um, what we are analyzed uh, for example in the data link it's exactly that. The, the, the data link uh, can be uh, hijacked and uh, a clearance can be replaced. So there is many mitigation uh, from the pilot, from the, uh, from the ground, but uh, what is behind the, uh, the, this, uh, this attack? Changing the CFL, why, etc. And that's exactly what you are pointed out. Uh, it's really, uh, let's say, the ATM, the air traffic management uh, behavior that uh, our protection uh, have to face. Uh, not only uh, something wrong in the, in the traffic, in the data flow, and we just cut the line. Okay, we can do it, but it's uh, also interesting to know how and how is difficult, and that's the aim of. Uh, what we are uh, intend to do. Uh, can somebody also from Indra uh, answer to this, give an answer to this question? Or... Okay, we can move to, uh, to another question. So there is a question for Diego from Indra. Um, in what uh, way do you address differently the cyber issues in ATM industry with respect to uh, other industries working with IT? Hello. So thanks for the question. Uh, we think that the ATM environment is something special because it's a critical environment and it's a uh, closed market. Um, we would like to, to say that it's an... Um, um, we have several problems in a, in a closed environment like in ITM. So uh, if we compare this uh, industry with another ones, with defense, for example, or with uh, a bank, uh, with an, a normal society in the, in the, I mean, in the street, in a, a market or, a, or something like this, uh, we are sure that uh, the challenge for this world is um, uh, get all the decentralization, uh, this geolocalization security in the in all this way. So um, I think this is the main um, uh, difference between both of us, but uh, uh, we need to 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 talk about the ATM environment as a as a um, as an special uh, ecosystem as well. Uh, thank you. We have a, an interesting, another interesting question here. It's not particularly addressed to any of you, but it's um, it's interesting, and you uh, you might one of you might be able to uh, say something about it. Uh, remote tower center controlling several airports is particularly vulnerable to a cyber attack, outage of a system or third party service provider, unless contingency procedures for a full RTC failure are established. Can you look forward to regulations in this important area? Tanya? Yes. I think we lost uh, Tanya. Uh... Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. 
So anybody can uh, give something on this question, or it's not uh, under your. Uh, I, let's say I can I can try. Uh, uh, I must admit that uh, uh, this question is uh, is very complex on the uh, go. Uh, let's say uh, outside the industry uh, uh, scope. Uh, we can answer from the industry uh, perspective. Um, that's true that uh, when uh, you install a remote tower with digital remote tower on site, then you, uh, you, you get the, the video flow and you get all, uh, if it's an important airport, let's say uh, all uh, remote uh, navigation aids uh, on, on, on the itself. Uh, you have to, to, to secure uh, all those lines. And uh, as we can have a contingency uh, and resilience possibility uh, on the air traffic control center, uh, it will be very difficult to have the same level of contingency with uh, digital uh, remote towers. Because when, uh, for example, the video uh, is act uh, and uh, for any reason you cut uh, you cut the, the video, the only thing if you have and nobody on the, the remote airport, because it's the aim, it's the, the, the objective, uh, except to, uh, to, uh, to call uh, the, the pilot on the frequency, uh, you, you, you cannot do uh, anything else. That's, this is a very uh, critical question. Uh, we can, uh, uh, of course, propose many uh, network uh, uh, protection uh, uh, with authentication, encryption, etc. Uh, but we know that hackers can uh, go around. And if it's not uh, today, it will be tomorrow or the, or the day after. So that uh, shall be assessed. But it's not only an industry uh, question, it's also a question uh, for the owner of uh, the remote tower solution uh, to deal with, let's say, an overall uh, risk. Uh, that's can uh, that's uh, he, he shall deal with. Um, uh, Olivier, I have a dedicated uh, question uh, for you. Can you read? There is uh, tooling uh, focuses on detecting intrusion. What about vulnerability detection to be able to patch before security events occur? Uh, yes, so vulnerability uh, management is a, a big topic. Uh, we, uh, uh, to be frank, we just started uh, la last year to, uh, to manage uh, my first uh, the Thales solution vulnerability uh, to, uh, to be able to, uh, to inform uh, our, uh, our customer of such a vulnerability. And I saw another question linked to this one, dealing with uh, vulnerability, okay, but uh, 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 what the impact of such vulnerability uh, for the ATM system? And it's very relevant as well, because uh, the, the added value of our vulnerability uh, management is uh, obviously uh, just to select and to assess the public, let's say the public IT vulnerability, which can uh, occur in the, our, uh, our components or uh, subsystem or systems, and uh, to assess exactly uh, if this vulnerability is a risk for the ATC solution in the scope of uh, the usage of this ATC solution in the country where we uh, install it and when it's uh, in, in operational. So yes, the, the answer is yes, uh, we are able to, to, to assess uh, vulnerability uh, or first to uh, our component uh, products uh, in the scope of the, their utilization for uh, CNS ATM. And we can also add some uh, public, let's say, codes, for example, routers, uh, it's uh, third party codes. And uh, if we are uh, asked for, we can also follow vulnerability on those codes. And uh, again, uh, within uh, assessing uh, their impact on the ATM system, not only on the public, uh, let's say, IT uh, uh, network or usage. 
Thank you very much, Olivia. I have a tricky question uh, for all of you. I know that you are not uh, legal experts, but le let's share this question and uh, tell us what you think. For Indra, can I have a response? I can't see the, the question. You, I don't know if my colleague. Uh, the question uh, is: Can okay. an NSP uh, be let me, held uh, liable? Put the question: for... Can an ANSP be held liable for having been compromised by a cyber attack? In criminal justice term, can uh, the victimized uh, be, clear, be declared liable? It, it's the usual question, uh, Sophia, we are asking in case of uh, a compromise due to a cyber attack or a fault on a system who who we uh, hold uh, liable. Uh, for example, I think is the, uh, yes. we all here are really uh, technical uh, people, so we are not sure about uh, the legal um but we can uh, check with our legal team in india generally and we can have an answer as uh, actually uh, we uh, we did have uh, this discussion uh, um, several times uh, with some some customer uh, it really depends on the countries uh, the, the, the 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 law on the countries but to make it short uh, let's say that um, as soon, uh, I would say that uh, life of people uh, can be in danger. You can have in some countries a group of people who try to suit the responsible. After the question is, uh, is the civil aviation responsible or let's say the, the, the entity who operates uh, the, the system, etc. So, the answer is not uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, it could be. It depends. Uh, and each, I would say, each case will be uh, different. So difficult to, uh, to answer. And I'm not legal, even uh, I'm working with, with, with them uh, on the, the daily basis. Uh, but it shall be assessed case by case. But we cannot, uh, we cannot say that uh, no one could be sued. Uh, it happens with the the unfortunate uh, accident uh, above the Constance uh, Lake uh, yes. many years ago uh, when uh, people were sued uh, in responsibility. So it can happen. It can happen. Uh, I think we can take one last question. This address, uh, maybe we would like to hear uh, an answer from Ruben as well. Uh, as well as from uh, our guests uh, from the industry. And uh, can you see the question? I, I will uh, uh, speak out loud. Do you consider that the research uh, has to focus on permanent improvement of Aeromax as it seems that it will be standardized soon? Okay. You want me to answer first, Vasilis? Yes, yes. To facilitate a little bit of discussion. Okay. So I think um, uh, so. Aeromax is just one of the the new uh, data link technologies that uh, that we are actually developing. I think what is important, uh, if you look from a, a redundancy or let's say from a reliability perspective, is also to look at redundancy. And one of the elements that we are developing currently in the R&D program is uh, the multi-link concept so that um, we actually have the possibility near an airport to use Aramax, for example, uh, but also uh, the VDL mode 2 or the, the follow-up of that, which will be LDAX at some point in time, uh, or SATCOM services. So, um, and then obviously when all are available, you just cho choose the, co the most cost effective, uh, which uh, meets the quality of service requirements for a specific service, but they can back each other up. I think on the question on uh, whether it should be permanently improved, I think 
obviously the, the answer is yes to some extent but, but that is a very generic answer for any technology i think that the, the the whole challenge with cybersecurity is that um it, it requires a very different approach from safety in that perspective and it's something that was addressed before in some of the other questions about uh, safety versus uh, security or actually it was one of the pso's that mentioned it i think if i recall well i guess the the ifatka um and um so it the uh, from a safety perspective you would want to keep things as stable as possible whereas from a security perspective you would want to continuously keep addressing any vulnerability especially zero day exploits as fast as possible so i think this is the real challenge that we have is uh, how to ensure stable and certifiable system while at the same time being able to uh, continuously respond to uh, uh, vulnerabilities as soon as they are discovered Uh, maybe a, a short uh, reply from uh, our guest. Yes, in a couple of seconds. Uh, I, I would just say, yes, of course, and the world is standard, standardized. Uh, if the ATM uh, wouldn't be standardized, uh, maybe uh, we won't be here uh, today to, to, to talk about uh, all threats that uh, can uh, can come. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, uh, the ATM world is standardized, and as soon as uh, you have uh, uh, data standardized, flow standardized, uh, hackers uh, will be able uh, to look after. So the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, from Intra, any response on that? Uh, Tanya is online. Uh, you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I can see everybody. I think uh, we are now coming to the closing time and we still have. Uh, I, uh, Ruben, I, I can uh, uh, see or hear uh, Tanya. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, we, I do hear Tanya. I don't know why you don't hear her, but uh, I hear her fine. So I think ah. she can take over uh, to, to close. Okay. Them. Yes, okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we still have plenty of questions that uh, were left uh, unanswered. Uh, we will um, we will uh, ask our speakers to give you, to um, send us some answers, and then we will share those uh, after um, some time today or tomorrow. Uh, we will see how. So uh, thank you all very much. There's been a lot of different uh, a lot of um, great questions and uh, very nice presentations. So um, I think uh, we can, uh, we're coming to a close. Ruben, do you want to say a couple of words? Oops. Costas, uh, so we came uh, to, the, to the end, so I guess uh, we can uh, shortly uh, close to thank all of our speakers, Olivier, Diego, Sofia, and uh, Juan, yes. and, uh, Daniel. Um, and, uh, yeah, apologies for this. I, I, you wanna, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it just crashed at the moment you gave me the word. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same uh, issue with Tanya. I couldn't uh, hear it. Uh, so I have to... Uh, okay. Uh, Anyways, yes. I, I would like to thank all of you uh, and also the audience for, for having been here, having been our guests uh, and... Um, I really enjoy to see uh, the open debate between the professional staff associations in the industry, knowing that as the joint undertaking, this is actually our core business to get all of the people together. This is basically what we're doing. It's why we are a joint undertaking. But here you see a bit of a flavor about how we are actually making sure that uh, that conversation is happening. Um, so just to make the people aware that are listening in, the professional staff association so there are multiple quite quite a few of them and uh, costas uh, gave a few of those uh, perspectives um, um are all the time looking at our core and at our key deliverables and actually providing feedback back to our industry members on any of the solutions that are being developed so even when we're not having this webinar that debate is actually happening and i thought that would be relevant to to point out here so I really appreciate and thank you for uh, for having demonstrated that uh, that debate is actually happening. 
Thank you very much, uh, Ruben, once more, and Dania for helping us in this webinar. And uh, to our guests, all the best. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye-bye.